right. So tonight we are doing photo editing with Pixlr. I'm Amanda, I'm a library assistant at Middleton Public Library. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. So let's go ahead. Can everybody see? We've got our, um, my web browser open. Um, so Pixlr is, um, a Photoshop tool that is free on the web. Um, it is at www.pixlr.com. So that's P I X L R.com. Um, and it is something that if you have a, a Google or Gmail account, that you can um, save to and open stuff from there. They link up um, the two organizations, kind of work together. Um, as far as I know, Google doesn't own them, but things change so quickly these days in the tech world that who knows. So um, if I have that wrong, I apologize, but I don't think they actually own them. They just work together. Um, so there are two different photo editing tools that they have on this website here. One is the Advanced Pixlr E and then Playful Pixlr X. So tonight we're going to be looking at the Advanced one. Uh, just because we're looking to see um, this is you know a free version of Photoshop for you to use so um, Adobe Photoshop can be really expensive for some people to use so this is a tool that you can use for free and um, do a little bit more in-depth um, photo editing than just you know changing the color of the picture or something like that um, that kind of thing you can do in that playful Pixlr X version um, it's kind of just a run-of-the-mill photo editing app, um, but it does work very well. So I think you can get apps um, for both of these. So if you wanted to put this on a tablet, you can get Pixlr um, in your app store as well. Um, but I'm doing this on a laptop computer tonight. And I find when you do photo editing, that's probably the best place to do that from. Big screens are always best. So if we click an advanced Pixlr E, this is what it opens up to. So you have a few areas here. Um, your history will show you what you're working on. Uh, create new. You can go ahead and click on that. Um, there are a stock photos search that you can do. Um, photos that uh, don't have any copyright issues for you to use if you need something. Um, otherwise, I usually start with my open image. That's kind of how I usually start with a new project. Um, otherwise, you can hit create new as well. Um, there's a few different things that you can do within Pixlr here. So you can create a new image, like I said. Uh, you can open up an image from your computer. Uh, you can open something using the URL. So that's underneath here, the load URL. And then uh, you can also save uh, what you're doing in a more uh, different way. So that would be uh, this login section here. Um, you can create in a free account and it's gonna save what you're working on. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be while you have the website open. So you don't have to create an account to get anything to work. Uh, which is really nice but and that's usually how I use it because um, I'm usually just doing small things here and there but if you do the login section um, that's also where you can link up your Google or Gmail account to it it's really nice I'm just going to ask you for a question so I have a fan on my computer that just started running can you guys hear that is it making anything loud or is it you can hear it okay i apologize is it hard to hear okay i don't know how so it's for some reason doesn't like what i'm running here which is just one website open that shouldn't really be causing a problem Check 
Vamos. So I'm going to try and keep going. Hopefully my computer calms down. <laughs> um, so to start off, I'm just going to hit um, create new, just so that we can go inside and show you the tools first. So to start, all of your tools are on the left side. Uh, at the top, you have your move tool, and when you do hover over them, they very nicely tell you what they are and kind of what you would use them for. Um, so it's not a guessing game, which is really nice. Um, there are um, a lot of, of uh, software apps out there that they'll have just the tools, and they might even tell you the name, but they don't tell you what they do. So when you first open it up for the first time, it may be confusing. So they make it really nice and simple. Uh, you also have um, a selection button here. They call it a marquee select. They have a wand select. And we'll be using some of these. Uh, your lasso tool is something you're going to use a lot. And there's also cropping, cutting. Uh, another one we're going to use tonight is the cloning. And then you have uh, the color replace, fill. I think those are the only ones really tonight. Maybe. And then down here is um, how you change the colors and if you want to swap, um, if you ever are using um, anything that has a layer behind with a different color and you'd hit the switch color button. Um, but you can go ahead and that's all on the handout um, and you can also go through and read all the stuff there. Um, you also have some tabs up at the top um, so you have file, edit, image, layer, select, adjustment, filter, view, and the help section. If you feel like you have questions, uh, they have a really great help section. Um, we're going to be using a lot tonight edit and adjustment, I think, are the main ones. So I'm going to go back and open just an image instead of a new. So if you notice, uh, now that I had started sensing, uh, there is something here in my history. Um, I can click the little menu button to delete it off if I want. Um, but I want to open image. And it's going to pull up for my computer first. Um, so this is where I want to pull up because I do have some stuff ready to go on my desktop. So I am going to click this car. So in the handout, um, I do have some URLs of some images that these are all images I just found on Google. Um, they're all JPEG images and um, I have them on there for you. So if later you want to go through and practice and go through the steps um, that we're going to go through here tonight, um, you can do so. So there are images that are available for you to um, access and then you can just download it and save as to your computer and then you'll have the image to play with. Uh, so that's what I did here. I just grabbed a random car image. Um, I wanted to show you the cropping tool first. Uh, so the cropping tool is this one here. Um, so this is pretty basic. It's just as uh, any other cropping tool where it puts the border around the image. Uh, and then you can click and drag the corners to make it a different size, different shape. If you wanted to try and get rid of some of that but still have a little background, you could do that. Um, and then if you click anywhere else outside of it, it can zoom in and zoom out with your mouse. And then if this is exactly where you want it, then you would do file and save. And then you can save the item. And if you notice, it does give me a preview of what it looks like. It has all of the uh, extra background chopped off of that. Um, and here you can do the name. Um, and then it does have file types. So when it comes to photos, uh, what you would probably want is either a JPEG or PNG. 
Um, PXD is kind of a, an even further along um, file type that unless you are um, a photographer, I don't, I think that's maybe when you would use that. Um, but otherwise, if you're just editing your own photos that you're taking of your family and friends, uh, it's probably going to be JPEG or PNG. Uh, the difference between these two is that PNG is just a higher resolution. Uh, so um, if you wanted to print stuff out or um, also enlarge in it when you're printing, um, PNG can be a better use. Um, if you wanted to change stuff here, you could, but this is telling you what you did there. And then when you hit download, it's now asking my computer, do you want to download this? Because it goes directly onto your computer um, into your downloads folder. Uh, so it's not anything that lives on the website when you don't have an account created. Um, but it's nice that it just automatically will put it in your downloads folder. And then I'm going to exile her. There's also um, next on your handout would be a resizing. So I am going to oops, that's just going to go back again. And now I do have in my history, the yellow car that I did. Uh, for the next one, we're just going to choose a different one. I'm going to do this fall scene. So if I want to resize this, I would click on the image tab up here, and then image size. And then this is a place where you can also resize if you have a specific width and height. Sometimes when you, um, some, I know I've, I've run into, um, I think I had a patron ask me one time, uh, they were submitting an article in somewhere and they needed to have a photo with it, but um, the journal or newspaper had a specific size that they needed to have it, um, but they didn't know how to resize their images. So if you have a photo, um, that is a file that you can put on here. This is a way that you can then resize it to the height and width that they're asking for. And this, I'm not really sure what constrained proportions means, but it was defaulted as on. So I'm going to say that that probably should be there. So if I wanted, maybe I want this to go down to 1000 instead of it was like 1250. So then it readjusts the height on the bottom for what was proportional. Um, oh, that must be what constrained proportions are. Keeps it proportional. Um, but otherwise, if you need to distort it for some reason, if you turn that off, it's probably not going to do that for you. Yeah. So if we hit apply. It has now shrunk it down a little bit, but not too much. Uh, but that is a way that you can resize the image instead of the cropping. The cropping is cutting things out, so the resizing is just making it larger or bigger without getting rid of anything. And then again, you would do file, save, download it to your computer. Um, if you are signed into something, and you hit save, um, it's just going to ask you if you want it to save in Pixlr or if you want to save it into like your Gmail account that you have it hooked up to. So it'll ask you exactly where you want to keep it. Um, that's just the one extra step on there. The next thing is we're going to play with uh, changing eye color and um, Pixlr. So uh, this can be you want to change, you know, uh, we're going to do a brown eye um, to a blue eye. Or if you have um, red eye problems in pictures, you can do this to then make it the correct eye color as well. Um, so let's 
Put that here. Just gonna double check. All right, just making sure we didn't have anybody who was late waiting to get in. So I'm gonna hit open image again. And if you notice, as I'm continuing in my history, it'll pop up here. And if you don't want it to hear, then you would hit the clear history button. But I like to see everything here. Now I have a very up close picture of an eye that I'm going to use. Not all the time is this going to be the case that you have a big giant blown up picture of an eye. Um, so when you do this yourself, you're going to be um, inserting whatever photo it is and then zooming way up once you get in the photo before you start. Um, so we're just going to go ahead. So here's our brown eye. And there's a few different steps for this, but once you get the hang of it, it can get um, fun and go really quickly. Um, so like I said, if it's not a, a close up picture, you want to zoom up as much as you can. And when I say zoom up, I mean probably as close as this, if you can get it, um, without it being too blurry for you to work on it. Uh, because you want the eye to be clear so you can stamp it with a color. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, use our lasso tool. So our lasso tool literally looks like a lasso. Uh, and up at the top here, you can see that it's currently on the freehand lasso. And that's the one I'm going to use right now. Um, later, we're going to use the polygon one, but the free one. So you want to just follow along the eye here. So I'm just going to draw with my mouse. So you click down, and I may not get it perfect, but it'll be good enough for what I'm doing. Um, the way you're drawing, you're just clicking with the left click on your mouse to draw, and you don't want to let up. Let's put in a little dotted line. And then I want to try and link it. So once I'm done and it links, it's going to start kind of blinking a little bit with the black and the white. And then uh, you go to edit and you do copy or you can do control C if you like shortcuts, but do your copy. So you're copying it. And then we are going to open a new layer. So over on the side, over on the side, we have the navigate section and our layers and our history. So our history is just showing uh, what tools and what buttons we're pushing as we go along. Uh, sometimes that can be helpful if you need to uh, do something and then write down to remember what tools you used to get to where you got if you need to replicate it later. Uh, but we are going to work with the layer section. So to open up a new layer, you hit the plus symbol that is down at the bottom of the layer section. Uh, and you want to do the empty layer. So now if you see, I have this blank layer and this background. So after I have my layer, I then need to paste onto my second layer. So I need to have this layer two highlighted. And if I go back to edit, then I should be able to go to paste. Nope, oh, that worked. No, it didn't. Hold on. I think this really good today and now it doesn't know what let's try it again. Well that didn't work. That's silly. Let's try this again.
I'll hit undo here. Undo is your best friend. Hmm. There we go. Okay. So now, if you notice, I do have another piece that has been kind of layered on there. So now I have background, layer two, and then the eye that I pasted. So I added a third layer. My issue was that my computer wanted me to use the shortcuts, not use the edit, copy, paste on the website. So I did control C and control V. Then we're going to use this move tool over here. So the arrow, it's going to select my eye and then I'm going to try and line it right back up to the point where it looks normal again, because before it was kind of like that. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to stop there. So after you move the eye into place, you want to open your color selector. So down here, we have the white and the black. So I want to change my color and I want this to be a blue eye. So I'm going to try and go into some blue. That looks pretty good, I think, for blue eye. And then I'm going to hit OK. And now I want my brush tool. So let's see. Let's do that brush tool. And I'm going to change, if you click on this number here for 40, it changes the size. So we want your circle to match the entire um, iris of the eye. I believe that was at around 142. You can always click out to check. I'm a little bigger than that. So let's do like 160. Okay, that looks close enough. So I have my brush set now. So now we want to brush it on the eye. So I click once. And if you want to kind of make sure, instead of having so much brown, I could kind of click it around and get it a little darker. Okay. So now here's what your eye's going to look like. It looks a little creepy right now. Um, but after you've gotten the color brushed on, then over in your layer section, you want to click on the three dot menu and there is um, this blend mode and this transparency. So here we could change the blend mode to whatever seems to work. Um, I found that the color down at the bottom here works pretty good and it really depends on what how you want it to look. Um, also darken or lighten or hard light or soft light. A lot of those work well. But if I hit color, now it has kind of pushed that blue in to change the color. And the reason why I like the color, I think the best is because it still is giving you all the different textures within the iris. If you do a different one, um, so if you like darken it, and actually the blue mixes and makes like a green color. So if I swap around, it'll just do different things. So the color I think is really the best one uh, when you're trying to get there. But again, if, depending on what you're trying to do, some of those other blend modes could be good. So I close that out. There's your finished product. 
Um, if at that this point it was a picture that you had zoomed up in, then I would zoom out and then you would see the finished product. Uh, this is the size I had. So then I would just do again my file and save. And then you have the eye color changed. Is there any questions so far before we move on? Not seeing anything in the chat. Not hearing anybody, so I'm gonna continue on. All right, so I am going to, let's not get back there. I'm gonna hit my back button again, start fresh. We're gonna play with how to replace a color. So if you just wanna change the color or something, uh, we're going to go again with that car, but I'm gonna do something different. So I wanna start with a clear new one. Um, so I'm going to try and change the color of the car. We'll see how well this works for me tonight. So I'm going to use my lasso tool and I'm going to draw around all the yellow section with the exception of some of the more intricate parts. Again, I may not be doing it perfect tonight. So just want to show you how to go about it. This is actually my project. I'd probably go a little bit of slower. All right, so we're just gonna play with this. Right now, we're going to ignore the other parts that you would go back and do again. Um, we then want to click the color replacement tool. So the color replace little brush thing. And then choose the color you want down at the color selector. Um, so maybe we want to turn this into like a red Mustang, right? It's a Mustang. No. I can't remember. I'm not a car person. It's a car. <laughs> so I'm going to do red. I'll hit OK. And then you want to set the brush size. So the one that I have right now is okay for some areas. So we're just gonna go with this right now and then we might make it a little smaller. Just kind of fill it in. So the thing that I like about this is, you know, you can just go like this and if you notice it's not going outside the lines. That's actually, oops, with the exception of that Chevy mark, um, or the little medallion Chevy signal on the front. It's actually doing really good at not coloring those black parts in for some reason. It must have some kind of smart tool put into this. So there I've colored the car. So now it's a red car instead of a yellow one. Obviously, since I didn't draw it perfectly, there are some little yellow spots here and there. 
um, and to get rid of those little lasso um, marks around the car, you go to edit and then let's see here. No, let's see it. Or no, select now. Select and then deselect. So once you hit deselect, all that goes away, and then it's the picture that you would now hit file and save. Uh, so if you have something that you wanted to change the color of, that's how you can go about that. Uh, I think that's a really fun one. But like I said, um, you have to take some time to draw um, around things and does help to zoom it up. So if you have something that's a little bit more intricate than the lines on this car, um, then I would zoom up really close to then draw around it. That is another one. After that, there's also, um, if you have something in the photo, um, specifically this is on your face um, that you want to get rid of. So here's some Photoshop airbrushing techniques that, um, you know, the media does on like celebrities and other things. Um, so we're going to play with that and learn how to do it ourselves. So we'll open image and on your handout, I do have um, a photo here of Eva Mendez. I chose her because she has a very prominent mole on the front of her face. Um, or as the world calls it, in, in Nevis. So we're overlapping the Nevis is what it's called. It's a silly term. Um, so we're going to grab that photo. Here's Eva Mendez. So she has that mole on her face. So I'm going to go to thought it was an adjustment. Let's see it. They've recently changed a lot on um, Pixlr, and I thought that I had checked on this one, but let me see. It's supposed to be under adjustment and then called touch ups. And Hmm. I chose, let's see here. Okay. I think I put it here. The only unfortunate thing about it being free and on the web is that they do change things. So let me just bear with me here while I'm trying to figure out where they put this. Okay, looks like they now call it heel. And it's over here on the side. Okay. So, as you go, it changes the size. So we're going to, that's a little too small. Use your little slider to get this, that, okay. Okay, so I just clicked over top of it. Um, what it's trying to do is it'll match whatever is around it for the color. 
Um, so I did it twice because once it did it the first time, um, it didn't really. So I'll do it again here since I did kind of quick. So I clicked on it once. I felt like you could kind of see where I did it. So sorry. There we go. Do it again. And then you would just hit file and save. Um, the infill is let see what that does. It's like it's doing the opposite and it's making it darker. It looks more like it's making it a sunken hole. Um, I would do the patch. Um, that's the way that I've usually done it. But you just choose your brush size and then click on it a few times and then it goes away. Um, so this would be um, for any kind of facial mark um, or if you have, um, it's also used for um, like burns or um, even facial hair. So if you're trying to get rid of like a mustache or a beard, um, you can use the heel tool for that too. So now you can be a, a fancy uh, person who does Photoshop to photos to make them look not exactly how it is in real life. It's actually pretty easy. Um, and we are going to look at two more things here. Next in your handout is how to remove the background of an image that you have. Um, so this is um, trying to figure out the best way. So when you do a photo search or image search on Google, and sometimes you have a photo that there's a color behind, um, like the logo or something else that you're trying to get, and you don't want that, and you want it all the way up to the edge of the the item that you're trying to get. Because because when you copy and paste it onto something, you're going to have that white background and it kind of gets in the way. Uh, so we're going to take that white background out. Uh, so it becomes uh, what is called a vector image. So you're kind of altering it a little bit. So let's go back and start again. And again, at any time, since we do have a small group, if you have questions, uh, I don't mind if you unmute yourself and, and ask me something, um, especially if there's something, um, once we get to the end too, if there's something you have wondered how to do, um, we can see if we can try and figure it out. If I don't know, I can always find somewhere that has directions, so help us. So I'm going to open image, and I'm going to do this fish photo. So you can see it has a white background. So that is not the most ideal. I want to be able to take just this part of the fish because maybe I want to put it in a picture um, of the ocean or an aquarium, um, somewhere underwater for you know, like an advertisement I'm doing or a poster. Um, then we're going to cut this. So first thing is put your image into Pixlr. And then we're going to use our wand tool. So your wand tool is this one here. And if I click around, you notice it has some weird stuff um, if, if that's if I click on the fish, it starts having this um, like that blinking black and white stuff again. And you want to click where you're trying to get rid of the um, portion you're trying to get rid of. So I want to click on the white space. So if you notice, once I clicked in the white space, Pixlr found the border of that background color and the rest of the image. And it very nicely followed every little intricate line, except for what's in here. 
Um, and we can try and get that later if we want. Um, otherwise, for these purposes, I'm just gonna leave it just so we can make this as simple as possible to show our example. Um, if you have a different uh, background that's not as uh, plain, <laughs> for better lack of a word, um, then you're probably gonna want to, instead of using the wand tool, you're gonna wanna do the lasso, and you're probably going to wanna draw it, um, either um, drawing with um, the freehand or the polygon. Uh, when you do the polygon, I'm just going to pop that off for a second. When you do polygon, it's um, pinpoint, uh, so you're connecting all the dots. So if you start here, you click, 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 so you're following along the line. It's not going to be as exact sometimes, depending on the shape. Um, but again, you're going all the way around, and then you want to connect it uh, on that end there, and then you should have the flashing colors around your border. Uh, I'm gonna go back. Not that there we go. So back to the wand. So if I'm doing it with the wand, I select the part that I'm trying to get rid of. And this is only for the wand, is that you then go to your edit menu and you're going to select free distort. So now you notice I have a box around the whole thing, and then I now have a select tool that pops up on the screen when I'm touching the white part, but not the fish. So I should be able to move it. So if I click off like this, it's now cut the white from the rest of the image. So I now can move that down and out of view so that it's not there and I just have my fish. So next, then you just, and it says, do you want to apply the distort? If you're trying to save it, I hit yes. So now you can do file and save. Save it as JPEG or PNG, however you need it, and then download. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and get rid of the white, I would then do it again and click on each section. So I'm trying to get rid of the white. So I just keep doing good start, moving that off. Those you after I click anywhere outside of it, apply it, I hit yes. And then I can also do that other section too. So I hit the wand again, a little white section, edit, free distort, and I can slide it down again. So now I have my complete fish. Yes, I want to save. And I can I already have a fish in here, so I'm just gonna call it fish one. <laughs> because now I have the version that doesn't have that white in the middle. So I didn't do that before. There you go. Is there any questions with removing an object? Or I'm sorry, um, removing backgrounds from the images.
it's pretty um, pretty easy with the step by step, um, and that is how I laid it out on the handout for you, just so that it's really easy. Once you play with one image, you can replicate it with most images. The real issue is uh, working with the lasso tool or the wand tool to get it to select exactly what you want. Um, that can be the hard part. Okay, so now looks like we're doing good on time. We are going to do our last item, um, and that is how to remove an object in Pixlr. So I'm going to go back to my main page, and in again. And I want to open up a photo of some race cars. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit out a race car. So this would be if you have, um, I think this happens a lot with people when you're out touring things or visiting um, somewhere, sightseeing and taking pictures, you might get somebody else who you don't know in the picture. Uh, so this would be a way that you could try to edit them out um, so that you make the picture a little bit nicer, uh, doesn't have the stranger in it that you don't know, especially if that's something that you maybe wanted to frame um, or or put somewhere uh, that you would much rather not have the stranger in the photo. So I have these race cars here. And uh, we are going to use our clone stamp button. So this is over here on the left side here. It looks like a stamp. And then we want to adjust our brush sizes. So um, here, I think for this, I went with 30. So you can use the slider. You also have the presets down here. Um, I'm going to do 30. And then the opacity. I can slide it or I can type it in. Now I think for this one, I said um, 95 on the handout. And I do recommend when you do something with replacing, um, you stick between 90 and 100 for opacity. Um, just works a little better. So let's do 95. So to remove the spot that you want to take out, uh, we have to take a sample pattern of what we want in that spot. So I would probably try maybe somewhere down here is maybe where I want to do that. So I want to press control and select the pattern and then let go of control. And then um, by clicking on my left click button of my mouse, I'm going to click and paint it over this pink car. You can always change things. You can always undo. So it looks like I kind of halved off part of that car. Um, so if I want to hit undo, I can undo it. And I can also change my brush size, maybe that was a little too big. I want to go down to 20. And because it would be weird if I didn't take out some of that shadow on the ground, I also took out part of that shadow right there. This car's not actually there. That looks a lot better. I'm going to take out a little of the shadow here too. Okay. So I could have maybe done a little better. I also might take the opacity down. Let's so go. I don't know if that really helps. I don't really think that's making a difference. I could have chose a different spot to do my sample pattern for the color I was replacing it with. Um, since I did it down here, um, 
because this is in a, the foreground and this is the background, maybe I should have selected a color that was more in line with where the car was um, because it, it could be the way that the sun was out that day or if it was cloudy. So as you get further away, the color changes. Um, so that could have been a reason why it looks a little weird, but for the most part, if you didn't really know what it looked like previous to that, you may not notice. Um, in a quick glance, it's something as a road with race cars on it. Um, I wouldn't think anyone would really see that. But if it's something as like getting a person out of the way, um, it can be hard when you are trying to get rid of sections if you have multiple colors. Um, so that's where you would have to edit a little bit, then hit control again and select the new color for the next section of it. Um, so anytime you hit control and then you select with your mouse the color, um, it's gonna change that pattern that it's replacing. Um, so like I said, if you have something that has multiple colors, um, you're gonna have to do that for every single color. Uh, and it can be a little um, taxing. <laughs> Takes up a lot of time. And at that point, you would wanna zoom up your picture more. Um, I'm using my mouse to zoom this here, but you can also um, do that with this view tab up at the top to zoom in and zoom out. Um, but you could, I could have gotten way up close if I wanted to. So some tricks that I also wanted to just let you know about when you are um, doing something with color or taking out images, um, moving your brush in the same direction all of the time can help. Um, so I was going kind of back and forth a lot when I was doing this. So I think that might be why I have these lines right here that I can see. Uh, so if I did it and just started from you know left to right, and then stopped and then left to right. It would probably turn out a little bit cleaner. And if you don't like your sample pattern, uh, you can always, like I did before, just go to undo. And you can go back, reselect, maybe choose that there instead. And then go back. So again, I'm going to get rid of some of the shadow of the car. So just remember that undo button, it can be your best friend. My problem, I think, with this photo is the shadowing. It's very obviously not a super bright day in this photo. So trying to get that correct can be a little hard, although I do think it's turning out a little better than the last one. I'm just going to fix some of the shadows up here. Just then it matches. There, I think that actually does look better. That is because I started doing one direction. So there's how you can take an item out. And again, you would just, again, file save, and then it's going to do download. Um, as a reminder, if you do make the free account, it's going to, when you hit save, going to ask you where you want to save it. Um, and then you would be able to choose uh, like your Google Drive. Uh, you can put it in your Google Drive, or you can actually just save it within the Pixlr account as well. So again, don't forget about this help section. Um, they have the keyboard shortcuts for all of the different tools. Um, so you can always look at that to help you uh, if you are somebody who likes shortcuts. It's a really great layout they have for you here. I would probably um, take a screenshot of this and then save it somewhere if you need to print it out to have with you. And then there are also it's some nice links here. Uh, so they just have the regular get help 
Uh, they also have YouTube tutorials that you can look at. Uh, they do lots of things on Instagram and Facebook, so you can uh, get links directly to those accounts to see what they're putting up. Um, and then they also have these color and font matchers. Um, takes you to a different website, but it helps you figure out the, the name of a color. You can play with that too, if that's something that you wanted to look at. Um, but this help section is laid out really nice. Um, they have they have it um, living in Reddit as a user community, just because this is a, a free thing. So a lot of people have posted stuff. So that is our class and I hope you had fun. Um, I hope it was a little dive into editing that you maybe didn't know previously. Um, I do think this is a really great tool. I think sometimes free can be good. <laughs> um, and in this instance, I do think Pixlr has done a really good job at making it pretty seamless. The tools work really well. Um, you, you know, it responds really well. And that's something you always want to look for. When I click a button, is it actually doing what I want instead of having to hit it five times before it actually does it? Um, so I think it's a really great um, competitor to Adobe Photoshop. Um, so I hope you have fun and use it well. If you have any questions, any um, extra photo editing things that you were hoping to learn tonight, um, you can ask now. I can see if I can figure it out or we can find um, some resources to help us out. Um, but otherwise, you're welcome to leave. Have a good night. Thank you. You're welcome.